Welcome to the Texas Hemp Show. This is podcast number 45 here on the Texas Hemp Show. I'm Russell Dowden, publisher and editor for the Texas Hemp Reporter magazine. And our co-hosts this week are Jesse Williams and Coleman Hemphill from the Texas Hemp Industries Association. How are you doing, Coleman? I'm doing excellent. I'm so excited to, to be on the show today and so glad to, to see the show on KLBJ. Really excited to, to engage with a, a new audience and, and hopefully taking some phone calls here in the next couple weeks. Yeah, we'll do. We'll be doing some phone calls. How are you, Jesse? I'm doing pretty good. Right on. Um, I'm not enjoying the traffic pickup from the COVID <laughs> recovery and the gas prices going up to go with it. Well, that... Uh, That's never fun. That's never fun. Gas prices increasing. No, that, that is not fun. But welcome to the Texas Hip Show, and it's podcast number 45. Welcoming in the new KLBJ's listeners. This is our second show on KLBJ. So good morning to those uh, tuning in after uh, listening to Coast to Coast AM there all night there, guys. But uh, no, we're excited. Thanks to the folks there at KLBJ. So we're, we're excited to, to have the new audience tuning in. For more information about the Texas Hemp Reporter, you can follow us online at... Our social media, we're on Instagram, uh, t- Twitter, we're on uh, Facebook. Uh, just do a search on, on uh, you know, Texas Hemp Reporter, but the website's texashempreporter.com. And we'd love to, to have you engaged in some of the activities that we have there with our news and, and information there on the interweb. Check us out online. Good stuff. Today on the program, we're going to have a call in the second segment with Greg Bowman from CBD Hemp Insurance of Texas and... You can get your business insured. So I uh, talked to Greg earlier today, Coleman, and he and I asked him a little bit about uh, the, the nature of the business and if he was getting an influx. He's renewing his ad campaign, he said, with us. And he said, uh, so I thought, well, you know, so oh, is his ad working? Or He said, well, it's a... Uh, it's not that it's 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 working tremendously or anything, Russell. I just know that this is a long. I'm in for the long haul, and we just want to make sure that we're 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 taking care of uh, you guys and that the ads are running. But he said, you know what's gonna what's gonna happen is it's gonna be a situation where a Delta product gets a retailer into hot water. See, nobody wants to act on the insuring until something big happens, and so when something of an incident occurs. He, he felt like, you know, that's going to happen down the road. But right now, he said early on with the crops, it's been slow and the uh, uh, insuring. Not everybody can be insured, but he said, I asked him to speak on the retail side. And, and Greg said that, you know, until some kind of incident happens and someone gets sued, then it's, he said, then it's just going to pour in and, and all the business and everybody's going to want insurance for the retail stores. Well, I know the Hemp Tours Agency here in Austin when they go around to a business, if a business is to be on their tour and to get their seal of approval, they have to have this insurance. So it's one of the things they're checking for is they're like, do you have insurance to cover your building, to cover your products, just general liability and product liability insurance. So definitely those people that are in that sector where they have another agency that's overlooking at them saying, hey, well, let's make sure you're squared away. They will definitely be needing this individual services. Yeah, there's such a, a huge opportunity with insurance and banking to really be the the front face directing a lot of best practices. Um, you know, right now there's not a compulsory education that's that's necessary outside of the 30 minute video that you mm-hmm. watch with TDA. Yeah, there's not you know still quite a. a not as much education as I would like to see on the retail side coming from the Department of State Health Services. And hopefully, and I'll certainly be asking Greg about this, you know, what are those prerequisites? What what different business practices do people have to have in place in order to be insured? And, you know, God forbid something comes up to, to make sure that that insurance is paid out. Um, it, it's, it's certainly important for people to be always wary of where they're sourcing their products. We, we talk about it every week, making sure that not only are they receiving those products with compliant COAs from whatever state they're sourcing it from, but, but also having those products tested in Texas with, with groups like Ionization Labs, who I work with. There's a number of great labs here in the state to, yeah. to confirm that those products are below that 0.3 threshold. Yeah, and he... He seems to be in for the, like Greg said to me, he said, oh, I'm in for the long haul, man. He was like, you know, people don't act, uh, they react in many ways when it comes to getting insurance. And um, I had uh, I had to get insurance for my business um, 
just for the building and being here leasing, you know, with the, the office and everything, it was just kind of a requirement. But, you know, he was just saying, you know, when, when something triggers and somebody gets into trouble, he said, then you'll see it snowball and, and agencies like mine will start taking a lot of orders and it, it'll just, it just unfortunately will end up being that way. Yeah, I know with my work with the Texas Hemp Industries Association and, and working with the National Hemp Association, a lot of our big focus has been on, on education. Um, we've been working with some, some international consulting groups, um, some, some very well-known uh, names, and, and as we you know, build those things out, we'll share more with you all in the next coming weeks. But hopefully we'll see a tightening up of best practices. Um, those groups in, in situations in the past coming out of the, the marijuana industry out of Canada, um, a group lost their license with Health Canada, and through going through this education, getting good SOPs in place, they were able to regain that, that license. Those kind of processes in place really help you in your discussions with your bank and, and certainly um, are going to help you on the insurance side. So reducing liability for, for our members and, and for farmers in the state has always been the focus. And Fortunately, I feel like Texas has taken a very conservative approach in, in pursuing variety trials, smaller grows, and I would say that we're, we're net positive. Um, unlike some states like Tennessee, unfortunately, that went really, really hard into the hemp industry in 2019, experienced the oversaturation of the market and the depressed prices. Yeah. We didn't experience as much of that in, in Texas, which is fortunate. And and now there's a lot of really exciting transitions um, towards grain and fiber production. I've seen some really remarkable grows in, in McAllen. I mean, plants that are 20 feet tall. Um, it's seven minutes after the hour. News Radio KLBJ 590. You're listening to the Texas Hemp Show. My co-host is Coleman Hemphill. Coleman is the executive director of the Texas Hemp Industries Association. So um, just familiarizing our listeners at KLBJ with uh, who everybody is. Jesse is the senior editor for the Texas Cannabis Collective. So the three of us have been doing the Texas Hemp Show together for about four months. And Jesse and I started this together in last September. So we September we're on our 45th podcast uh, and, and and just setting up. You were talking there, and I was like, you know, let's introduce Coleman a little more to to the listeners uh, here on KLBJ. But. Uh, very informed group here uh, between the three of us, uh, uh, and, and makes for a good a good show. And, and so uh, we're excited to to bring this to the new to the new audience uh, here this morning. I'm hoping the education that Coleman talked about, like his group is doing, and I mentioned higher ed hemp tours. I'm hoping mm-hmm. that that's going to pay off because I personally believe we're going to see like a dam break in the future with our Department of State Health Services going after retailers. Because it's been this buildup. We had an entire year where they didn't really go after anybody. They haven't really been on their tails about making sure that they their products are completely legit. So you have some that are taking it serious. They're going, hey, I'm going to make sure I, I'm all set up. They're looking like he's you're, our individual who's going to be coming on, Mr. Bowman. They're looking at the long term. But there's so many shops popping up. And with nobody being the real sheriff in town over it, you could say, <laughs> Eventually, it's a wild, wild west. Eventually, when the sheriff does finally roll into town and starts nabbing people, it's just going to be this flood. And that's when, he like said, long haul, it's going to pay off for him because they're going to react. And there will be some that leave the space, but others will wise up. They'll get their insurance. Yeah, you know, so to, to kind of this point, and you're talking about this buildup, um, some, some really notable news from this last week was really coming out of, out of Kentucky. Um, a number of weeks ago, the Kentucky Department of Agriculture's general counsel, Delta 8 products are, are not legal products. And, and that, that comment was used as the pretext to raid a bunch of stores in Kentucky, mm, seize a lot of products. And a lot of those people are looking at pretty serious kind of felony one trafficking charges in Kentucky. And the, the Kentucky Hemp Association, a lot of those different retailers have filed a, a lawsuit that named the Ag Commissioner, um, Brian Quarles, who I believe is also looking at running for governor in Kentucky, and the head of the Kentucky police in that lawsuit. Um, that It's going to be interesting to see how that, that plays out. Um, I know that, that the, the Ag Commissioner really doubled down on on um, how those different products were made, making some pretty inflammatory kind of statements towards the industry. And, you know, I, I'm hoping to see some good advocacy and some clarification 
on this comment that came from that general counsel stating that that Delta eight's not legal because it's on the DEA schedule of, of drugs, not understanding that Delta eight that's on that schedule of drugs is from marijuana and that there is this very distinct line between hemp derived cannabinoids, derivatives, extracts, the language that's in the farm bill versus um, the comment that was put out there. Um, unfortunately, I wish they had just addressed the issue as a whole. Um, I, I don't like to see unilateral government overreach making statements without going through the proper processes of, of opening up public comment, making rules. Um, so things have kind of gotten out of whack there, and it'll be interesting to see what kind of impact that has on, on neighboring states. Did Kentucky have an overwhelming amount of grow for for hemp i know you, you talked earlier about the the market being oversaturated we really saw that in 2020 2019 was was one of was kentucky one of the states that overproduced in recent years yeah so kentucky was was really one of the the states that was the leader was out in front um i think they had some of their first grows in 2013 prior to the 2014 farm bill um, they had quite a bit of infrastructure in place there, but they did probably experience the washout as, as hard as any state in the country in 2019. Companies like Gincana, um, a lot of a lot of shift in management of companies there. So it's it's a bit of a mess there. Um, I know that's some, certainly something that a lot of the industry is focused on, um, and we will see how things work out. Well, we're going to take a break here on News Radio KLBJ 590 AM this morning on. The other side of the break, our guest will be Greg Bowman of CBD Hemp Insurance of Texas. And uh, we'll talk to Greg here shortly and more Texas Hemp Show after the break. Thanks for tuning in. Cosmic Cowboys Extractions at the forefront of industrial hash production and infusion. Our trademark gold dust hash is truly total spectrum and chemical free for consumers. Let us put our patented technologies and processes to work, adding value to your product. Gold dust, probably the best hemp product on the planet. To place your order, visit CosmicCowboysExtractions.com. You're listening to the Texas Hip Show, sponsored by The Loot. The Loot, helping vape and smoke shops deliver the most innovative products to customers. Constantly creating new products that people love. E-liquid, salts, CBD topicals, tincture flour, edibles, and Delta 8. Your customers will be shouting, give me The Loot. The Loot, creating high margin products for vape and smoke shop. Contact us today at thelootjuice.com for all your vape, CBD, and Delta 8 needs. Mention Texas Hemp Reporter for 10% off. Give me The Loot. Hello, Texas hemp farmers. This is CBD Seed Labs reminding you that it's not too late. In fact, it's the perfect time to plant your summer hemp crop. At CBD Seed Labs, we have three world-class hemp cultivars with proven success across Texas. Visit us at cbdseedlabs.com or call 442-222-8595 to learn more. Mention this ad in Texas Hemp Reporter and get an additional 10% off. That's cbdseedlabs.com, where we have the seeds you need to succeed. CRI is a top 25 nationally ranked CPA firm with offices across the Southeast and with clients across the globe. Over the last few years, our firm has developed a niche in the agriculture and cannabis industry. We understand the unique challenges growers and processors face every day, including addressing challenges resulting from the USDA and DEA final interim rules, banking and insurance concerns for cannabis businesses, unique farming challenges associated with hemp and high THC cannabis, and GMP clean room management and general management for business in the rapidly changing cannabis market. Our seasoned team of professionals can help you meet these challenges with sound business, tax, financial, accounting, and technology advice. Visit CRICPA.com to find out more or schedule your free introductory consultation. That's CRICPA.com. The third annual Southern Hemp Expo is now open for exhibitor and sponsor registration. This year's event will take place at the Convention Center in Raleigh, North Carolina on September 2nd through the 4th, where we will have three days of conferences, seminars, and workshops, 250-plus exhibitors, and numerous networking and entertainment opportunities. For more information, check out SouthernAmpExpo.com. Since 1938, TPS Lab has been guiding growers of many different crops around the world to making maximum yields and quality and solving difficult field problems with advanced innovative solutions. Hemp Plan offers the most advanced guidance to industrial hemp growers. The purpose of Hemp Plan is for you to realize the highest quality and yields with minimal THC for your crop's genetics 
by minimizing plant biotic and abiotic stresses. TPS Lab offers many services and options to the industrial hemp grower. Contact Joe at TPS Labs at 956-383-0739. That's 956-383-0739. That's TPS Lab. You're listening to The Texas Hemp Show, produced by your friends at The Texas Hemp Reporter. 60,000 copies published free every year. The Texas Hemp Reporter is mailed to over 2,000 licensed hemp producers in Oklahoma, New Mexico, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas. News, technology, trends, finance, culture, health, all things hemp in the Lone Star State. The Texas Hemp Reporter Magazine. Hey, this is Tommy Chong, and you're listening to the Texas Hemp Show. Now, back to the show with your host, Russell Dowden. Fifteen minutes after the hour here, News Radio 590 KLBJ. It's the Texas Hemp Show. Good morning to all those listeners. And joining us here on the program of the Texas Hemp Show this week is Greg Bowman of the CBD Hemp Insurance of Texas. Greg, welcome to the program, sir. Well, thank you guys for having me. I greatly appreciate the time. Well, thanks for coming on, and we appreciate your support of the Texas Hemp Show and the Texas Hemp Reporter Magazine. Greg has a a nice ad there on, I think, page uh, 25 here in the current issue of the Texas Hemp Reporter Magazine, CBD Hemp Insurance of Texas, Hemp Cultivation, uh, Manufacturing, Processing, Exposure. Greg, tell us about your business, because... You have you're the only insurance company that's ever ran an advertisement with us in a year and a half, and uh, it's certainly a, a space that's that's new. You folks need insurance in this space. Tell us a little bit about how uh, your business works and and how you insure insure farmers and retailers. So our philosophy as an agency is more specialized than generalized. So we. We pick an area and we try to become really proficient at, at what we do and knowledgeable and educate ourselves. And so the carriers that are in that space that like that type of business will partner with an agency um, with the similar concepts or the similar approach. So we we saw where the industries go. We, we hope Texas will get there a lot quicker for what you guys are trying to do and what the industry is trying to do in Texas. Um, so we went out, we found some carriers that are mostly West Coast guys, do a lot of cannabis business, and they were looking for somebody to to put a footprint in the Texas market. They appointed us to carry their products. I don't know if there's another agent that has the carriers that we have currently. Mm-hmm. I'm sure as the business grows, just like anything else, they'll start appointing people and people will have more access to it. But um, it's the best policy in the business right now. And they write a ton of cannabis business on the West Coast in mm-hmm. Colorado and other areas. So they know the business. We're trying to learn the business. And, of course, being associated with you guys and attending your events and listen to your podcast and reading your 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 reports it it helps us learn the business so your background was already in insurance prior and you just uh, how, how what's the level of uh, i guess ex- experience that that you're, you you've had with insurance so i've got a lot of gray hairs in my my head and they've all come <laughs> from the insurance industry so i've been doing it for a while yeah uh, the name of our agency is Commercial Insurance of Texas, so hence we do mostly commercial stuff. We don't do houses and, and individual cars and 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 donut shops down the street. We've got a couple categories that we specialize in, and mm-hmm. so we started a division called CBD Hemp Insurance of Texas, specific to um, hopefully what will become a big demand. And uh, I can kind of take you through the fundamentals of what probably people think is the requirement of the state with their general liability requirement for the license and then kind of what to expect down the road. Yeah. uh, Yeah. We'll let you make those points. I think it's important folks that are in retail CBD or smoke shops that are selling Delta nine Delta eight products, you know, 
to even the hemp side of it with the with the growers people are people are going to be looking to get insured with with their businesses what um What's the percentage that you found? I mean, are you are you dealing with with farmers as well as retailers right now? Well, we can do we can do the groves um, if they're indoor. So okay, okay. Most most of your crop, and I, and I know a couple of guys that do crop insurance. If if the farmers out there that are doing any other crops and they have crop insurance, you can add your hemp in with that schedule. But you have to be growing other products right corn beans whatever you grow whatever whatever you're farming if you're growing something else you can add some hemp to that schedule if you have a a greenhouse that is secure meets the the structure requirements of the the uh, grower not just a plastic bent over hoop house but if you've got a structure and a building and and it's secure and it's got security and in, in video and pretty scrutinized security uh, levels of like alarms, monitored alarms, not you know your 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 ring doorbells you know type uh, apps, but uh, monitored security. We can we can uh, we can insure your crop. So I wanna... and all the way through the crop through production and everything. This is Jesse Williams from the Texas Cannabis Collective. Yeah, I wanted to ask you. You talk about the structure and. If you're putting security, there's obviously that's adding benefit to try to secure your property and make it less likely that somebody would get into it. What I wonder is, I always ask when people talk about insurance, is there like a basic run-of-the-mill checklist that potential clients can get a hold of to make sure that they have the basics down on top of like hiring security, putting security cameras, alarms, having fire systems in place? Is there anything else that that like um, a baseline they could look at to know more? Yes, there is. So there's minimum requirements, and I probably should post it on our website. I could send it to you guys, and um, maybe uh, Russell, we can adjust that that next ad in your magazine sure. to to include that list. I think that would be um, a good idea. When when is that ad due? <laughs> you wouldn't need that uh, to be by no later than the eighth of August. So you've got about ten, twelve days. Yeah. Well, okay. I, well, well, I have your email here, info at cbd-hemptexas.com for anybody who's interested in getting a hold of you via email. Correct. And we have some, some published um, some lists through the application process um, that we go through, so it's easy. I just need to figure out some good ways to publish the, the list. And, but it's, it's a good monitored alarm system, um, central alarm, and then good security alarm. You know, they don't want it to burn down um, or they want to have a good alarm system if it burns down. And, of course, these are derived from cannabis insurance carriers, so they're really cautious of theft, vandalism, um, and all that. And that's what if, – if some of the people out there have have tried to secure some insurance and they look at the application process like this is an overkill, right now it is because they're all derived off of cannabis carriers and they're – they're scrutinizing you like you're a cannabis grower. Sure. E- Greg, this is Coleman Hempill with the Texas Hemp Industries Association. B- before you came on, we were talking about the, the really unique opportunity that insurance has in providing those best practices. So I am encouraged that you have, you have that checklist. Could you also kind of talk about how important it is that farmers begin reporting how many acres they're growing, you know, the, the kind of revenues that they that they got over their growing season and how that impacts their their coverage um, long term um, and, and different opportunities that may come available from that. So it, I'm not a true crop guy like outdoor crops, but I, I do know this: the insurance industry as a whole, no matter what they're insuring, is done by actuaries. The better they have a feel for what they know is the exposure the better they can insure it. If they don't know, which a lot of them are in the position right now, what they, they don't know what they don't know, and very <laughs> seldom will you ever see an insurance company miss to the low side of their premium. Almost guarantee you. If they're not real sure about it, they're going to go to the high side. So the more information you provide the carrier, right? So I know a lot of people out there look at insurance carriers kind of sideways about getting screwed. If you tell your insurance carrier exactly what you do, 
how you do it, when you do it, how it's stored, how it's packaged, how it's everything. If they agree to take your premium, you will never have a problem with the claim. It's the ones that kind of flirt the description of where it's stored or how it's manufactured or when it's done, how it's done. But the it's, it, to answer your question specifically, it's super important to let them know how much you're doing because the more you do and the more it's done without issues is the cheaper your insurance premiums will become. Greg Bowman, our guest from CBD Hemp Insurance of Texas. You're listening to the Texas Hemp Show this morning here on News Radio 590 KLBJ, and it's podcast number 45 for us here at the Texas Hemp Show. Uh, Greg, your website is cbdinsuranceoftexas.com. For our listeners, uh, visit his website at CBD Hemp Insurance of, of Texas. And, they, and take a look at that, and you can also contact him on the phone there at, at 888 Stay right there, though, Greg. We're going to take a quick commercial break and come back on the other side, and, and we'll have another, another short segment with you here to talk about uh, your services and products. But we'll be right back uh, uh, after this. It's News Radio 590 KLBJ, the Texas Simp Show. We'll be right back. Cosmic Cowboys Extractions, at the forefront of industrial hash production and infusion. Our trademark gold dust hash is truly total spectrum and chemical free for consumers. Let us put our patented technologies and processes to work, adding value to your product. Gold dust, probably the best hemp product on the planet. To place your order, visit CosmicCowboysExtractions.com. You're listening to the Texas Hip Show, sponsored by The Loot. The Loot, helping vape and smoke shops deliver the most innovative products to customers, constantly creating new products that people love. E-liquid, salts, CBD topicals, tincture flour, edibles, and Delta 8. Your customers will be shouting, give me The Loot. The Loot, creating high margin products for vape and smoke shops. Contact us today at thelootjuice.com for all your vape, CBD, and Delta 8 needs. Mention Texas Hemp Reporter for 10% off. Give me The Loot. Hello, Texas hemp farmers. This is CBD Seed Labs reminding you that it's not too late. In fact, it's the perfect time to plant your summer hemp crop. At CBD Seed Labs, we have three world-class hemp cultivars with proven success across Texas. Visit us at cbdseedlabs.com or call 442-222-8595 to learn more. Mention this ad in Texas Hemp Reporter and get an additional 10% off. That's cbdseedlabs.com, where we have the seeds you need to succeed. CRI is a top 25 nationally ranked CPA firm with offices across the Southeast and with clients across the globe. Over the last few years, our firm has developed a niche in the agriculture and cannabis industry. We understand the unique challenges growers and processors face every day, including addressing challenges resulting from the USDA and DEA final interim rules, banking and insurance concerns for cannabis businesses, unique farming challenges associated with hemp and high THC cannabis, and GMP clean room management and general management for business in the rapidly changing cannabis market. Our seasoned team of professionals can help you meet these challenges with sound business, tax, financial, accounting, and technology advice. Visit CRICPA.com to find out more or schedule your free introductory consultation. That's CRICPA.com. The third annual Southern Hemp Expo is now open for exhibitor and sponsor registration. This year's event will take place at the Convention Center in Raleigh, North Carolina on September 2nd through the 4th, where we will have three days of conferences, seminars, and workshops, 250 plus exhibitors, and numerous networking and entertainment opportunities. For more information, check out SouthernHempExpo.com. Since 1938, TPS Lab has been guiding growers of many different crops around the world to making maximum yields and quality and solving difficult field problems with advanced innovative solutions. Hemp Plan offers the most advanced guidance to industrial hemp growers. The purpose of Hemp Plan is for you to realize the highest quality and yields with minimal THC for your crop's genetics by minimizing plant biotic and abiotic stresses. TPS Lab offers many services and options to the industrial hemp grower. Contact Joe at TPS Labs at 956-383-0739. That's 956-383-0739. That's TPS Lab. 
You're listening to The Texas Hemp Show, produced by your friends at The Texas Hemp Reporter. 60,000 copies published free every year. The Texas Hemp Reporter is mailed to over 2,000 licensed hemp producers in Oklahoma, New Mexico, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas. News, technology, trends, finance, culture, health, all things hemp in the Lone Star State. The Texas Hemp Reporter Magazine. Hey, this is Tommy Chong, and you're listening to the Texas Hemp Show. Now, back to the show with your host, Russell Dowden. News Radio 590 KLBJ. It's the Texas Hemp Show this morning. We need a coffee sponsor on this show, I think, at some point, Coleman. We're going to have to add a, a coffee sponsor in. I've been talking to our friends over at Ruta Maya. They used to do a lot of business with me over the years. And yeah, well, I, I need to bring I need to bring those guys in. Yeah, no, and we I I would love to reach out to, to Willie too. I know uh, Willie's Remedies Is also right? has a has a coffee. <laughs> I see them at, at Royal Blue and a couple of the different convenience stores around town. I uh, I would love a coffee sponsor. I, th- I think that would be great. <laughs> well, we are recording this show this week from the office, but uh, they air there in the morning on on uh, uh, on KLBJ in the in the very early morning hours. It's from six to seven a.m. this morning here for KLBJ listeners. Podcast number forty five here of the the Texas. Hemp Show. I'm Russell of the Texas Hemp Reporter. Our co-host Jesse Williams of the Texas Cannabis Collective, and then uh, Coleman Hemphill of the Texas Hemp Industries Association, uh, co-hosting here with us today. Podcast number forty-five. Our guest is Greg Bowman of the CBD Hemp Insurance of Texas. Greg, I was just thinking about you know this checklist that uh, Jesse was talking about with you for your ad. In the upcoming issue of the Texas Hemp Report, that new issue is going to be the September issue, Greg. So we have a little time. We, we try to get your ads in a little earlier than we do the stories, Greg. But I think, as well, I was telling Coleman while we were in break, I think that it would be a good move for us to print an article, uh, maybe, or some editorial about your services and and i don't know if i want to just open on the air here just kind of give you the open invite for an editorial piece because i i think that would really educate readers to learn more about uh, insurance and you know as it relates to cbd and hemp and 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 eventually cannabis here in texas right and it's um it, it, it's it's pretty detailed the way underwriters look at accounts, but it's fundamentally makes sense in the simplest form, right? So if every producer, manufacturer, production was kind of on an even scale, they would look at you as, let's say, on an index of 100 and say, well, this guy does it better or he has more security in his place, so I'm going to give him a 10% credit. This guy doesn't have that kind of level of security on his place, so I'm going to give him a 10% debit. This guy has 20 years experience. That's worth the credit. And what you want to do is set up your operation where every time they look at you, they're like, that is much better than the standard. So I'm going to credit, 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 credit. And then the next thing you know, your premiums are much more reasonable than you thought you were because there's a lot of people out there that go debit, 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 debit. But a checklist like that would be easier to produce, and, and I would love to, to take on the, the project and get it to you. Greg, this is Coleman Hemphill. Um, you know, kind of a consistent theme that I see throughout this is, is transparency. That, that the more transparent, transparent the companies can be, the, the better it's going to be for them. On the insurance side and, and really for their business as a whole, um, could you kind of go into to some of the, the coverages that you provide, your, your general liability, product liability, and, and some scenarios of where um, you've seen um, insurance be necessary and, and what people need to be looking out for? So that's, that's a great, great question and point. So your, your license requires you to have a general liability policy. So let's take an example, a, a CBD retail store. With that, you can, there's carriers out there that are writing people policies that are maybe $500 annual with some fees and stuff, $750 to $900. It's probably a lot of listeners going, yeah, that's right. That's about what I'm paying. 
But if you look at what the exposure is in that policy, it'll say health, nutritional, and something else, supplement. But it will not say the words CBD or hemp. There's a lot of carriers, and we represent some of them, that when we looked at some of these policies, we were like, we didn't know you do this. And they say, we don't do that. So some some agents and you know whoever they are, they, they might be gaming the system, or they might not know, or they're putting the CBD store um, in the same category as your GNC nutritional vitamin store. Well, it's not. So let's say someday you have a claim, somebody's broken into your store, steals all your product, and you want to make a claim, and they come to you and they look at you and like, you didn't tell us you were selling CBD products. Again, if you tell them exactly what you're doing, you pay the premiums, it might cost a little bit more, $100 more, $150, just because there's that little tack on because they're not sure. Um, but they won't. you won't ever have a claim problem. So you want for, – for everybody out there that has gotten their their general liability to meet the state requirements and they have a retail store, so that means a landlord wants to see your million-dollar general liability policy, you want that policy to say, see it somewhere, CBD or him, somewhere in that policy language, somewhere in the proposal language. If not, it not means that you're going to get denied on a claim, but you never want to chance it, okay? So that's the first thing I see a lot. And then just to, to, to define what the general liability is, the minimum requirement by the state, you have your uh, premises liability, which means I'm walking into your store, I trip over the rug, and I break my hip. See, Russell, there's the answer. That's how long I've been doing this, right? I'm in the hip break bench. So um, – so I break my hip. Your general liability, because I didn't have my rug placed right, will play, pay for the hip replacement or knee replacement or get stitches on my head. Mm-hmm. That's just your premises liability. Yeah. Um, another is the, the damage, physical damage, right? I go out to your farm. I park my car. One of your workers backs their forklift into my truck tailgate or whatever, damages my truck. That's your – that's your physical damage to your general liability. There's no part of that basic liability that covers your products. Somebody comes in and makes a claim, uh, this may be sick or, or whatever, that is product liability and that is different than what your general liability piece is. For all the manufacturers out there and the processors, I highly recommend you looking into the product liability not necessarily because Coleman, as we were talking about, it's just not regulated to the point that everything else is regulated. So it's hard to say, hey, this made me do this. It's kind of like vitamins, mm-hmm. um, the way it's looked at. It's not something that somebody can get sued unless they're making false claims. Now, the total, you know, the medical false claims, that's something else. But let's say you did have that part. It's, it's not that they're going to get a big settlement or turn into a, a class action suit. It's more of you could have somebody of authority come to you and say, where did you get this product? Well, that white labeler is where I buy all my product. The white labeler, they go over there and said, that made this guy sick. You need to do a product recall. That you Try to wrap your hands around, uh, head around a, a white labeler recalling every bottle of the product they put. Yeah, Massive. it's just it's just insane. If you had the right insurance, you call your insurance company and they do everything for you. Um, and it, it's not cheap, but it's it's like any other insurance. When you have to use it, it's worth every penny of it. This is Jesse again. Um, you brought up about, you made an example of dietary supplement stores. And it's funny because right before we started, Mr. Hempel came in and talked about how, I guess, the FDA has been directed to, within the next 180 days, actually start regulating it as a dietary supplement in some form. Like, you actually give regulations for that. And I'm wondering, what would you, what do you imagine or what do you foresee changing in the insurance realm when it does get regulated as a dietary supplement? So, we're, we're after the fact. The, the carriers have people that are on kind of Coleman and your side of watching what the legislation does, what the rules, we, we act when they react. So I have no idea how they're going to approach it. 
and they won't tell you, right? They'll just give you the rules and regulations today and say, we'll insure that, but we won't insure this. You know, we'll insure all your your CBD and your hemp, but we won't insure anybody that we see that has Delta 8 on their website. Just that's the kind of – we don't see any of the vaccine. So, so you you brought up kind of the the elephant in the room in the hemp industry right now around Delta Eight. Yeah, I know that there's been a lot of phone calls that I've received and a lot of concern from individuals who have tested hot on a drug test. You know, I know that's one element of those products that that probably increases the the liability. Uh, could you speak to any other you know issues that you've seen in the insurance side with Delta Eight versus CBD products that have been on the shelf for a number of years and um, have not had the same physical effects and, and the same potential um, potential issues with, with drug testing. So that, that would lead into a product liability claim. But when I started just a few months ago, um, it wasn't an issue. Didn't even come up in conversation. So your policy didn't exclude a Delta-8 portion to it. It takes a lot. Every insurance policy is regulated by the state. So to make in, in changes within a carrier's insurance policy takes a lot of filing. It takes over a year to, to, to file and change a, a insurance policy. Now I'm talking actual policy. You know that 300 page book of crap that you get that's very difficult to read um, where everything's hidden in small print. They it does not exclude a Delta-8 um, product specifically in an insurance policy now, where if you had a claim like that, then they could be on the hook for the coverage. What they're telling us now is if we go on that individual's website and we see that they are selling Delta-8 product, we will not give you a proposal. So they've cut it off before it even gets yeah. to that point. Yeah, Which they, means they're trying to, you know, they're they're basically taking the point where they, it's still, you know, uh, illegal. For well, the, that's the, happening the, also, the, Greg. That's also happening with merchant services. If you're a business and 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 some banks, I'm finding that the retailers, if they say that they have a Delta Eight product on, some of them won't bank with them. Some of them won't do card processing with the with them. Um, and so they make them remove that stuff from their website. Our guest, Greg Bowman, we've got about uh, less than two minutes. Fire off your website, Greg. Tell, give out a shout out an email. Um, how can folks learn more about CBD Hemp, uh, Hemp Insurance of Texas? Uh, and just maybe give them your email or your phone number. And, and how can folks learn a little more for their business uh, about getting it properly insured in this space? So the website is cbdhempinsuranceoftexas.com. Just all spelled out. And then the, the email address is info at CBD hemp Texas. So there's a dash in there, CBD dash hemp Texas.com. And then my cell phone number is 210 965 2208. That's 210 965 2208. And there's still a lot of stuff to talk about. So uh, thank you guys for having me on. And if anybody has any questions, please feel free to reach out. We will certainly do that. Uh, Greg Bowman joining us from CBD Hemp Insurance of, of Texas. And, and listen, uh, let's talk about getting an article in there as well for September. I think that would be a good, a good fit. So uh, uh, we'd really appreciate the, some contribution there. But thank you so much, Greg, for being a part of the show this morning. All right, love you guys. Thank you. Appreciate All right, thank you. you. There he goes. There's Greg Bye. Bowman. This is the Texas Hemp Show. We're going to take another quick break here on News Radio 590 KLBJ. 43 minutes after the hour. We'll be right after this. Cosmic Cowboys Extractions, at the forefront of industrial hash production and infusion. Our trademark gold dust hash is truly total spectrum and chemical free for consumers. Let us put our patented technologies and processes to work, adding value to your product. Gold dust, probably the best hemp product on the planet. To place your order, visit CosmicCowboysExtractions.com. 
You're listening to the Texas Hip Show, sponsored by The Loot. The Loot, helping vape and smoke shops deliver the most innovative products to customers. Constantly creating new products that people love. E-liquid, salts, CBD topicals, tincture flour, edibles, and Delta 8. Your customers will be shouting, give me The Loot. The Loot, creating high margin products for vape and smoke shops. Contact us today at thelootjuice.com for all your vape, CBD, and Delta 8 needs. Mention Texas Hemp Reporter for 10% off. Give me the loot. Hello, Texas Hemp Farmers. This is CBD Seed Labs reminding you that it's not too late. In fact, it's the perfect time to plant your summer hemp crop. At CBD Seed Labs, we have three world-class hemp cultivars with proven success across Texas. Visit us at cbdseedlabs.com or call 442-222-8595 to learn more. Mention this ad in Texas Hemp Reporter and get an additional 10% off. That's cbdseedlabs.com, where we have the seeds you need to succeed. CRI is a top 25 nationally ranked CPA firm with offices across the Southeast and with clients across the globe. Over the last few years, our firm has developed a niche in the agriculture and cannabis industry. We understand the unique challenges growers and processors face every day, including addressing challenges resulting from the USDA and DEA final interim rules, banking and insurance concerns for cannabis businesses, unique farming challenges associated with hemp and high THC cannabis, and GMP clean room management and general management for business in the rapidly changing cannabis market. Our seasoned team of professionals can help you meet these challenges with sound business, tax, financial, accounting, and technology advice. Visit CRICPA.com to find out more or schedule your free introductory consultation. That's CRICPA.com. The third annual Southern Hemp Expo is now open for exhibitor and sponsor registration. This year's event will take place at the Convention Center in Raleigh, North Carolina on September 2nd through the 4th, where we will have three days of conferences, seminars, and workshops, 250 plus exhibitors, and numerous networking and entertainment opportunities. For more information, check out SouthernHempExpo.com. Since 1938, TPS Lab has been guiding growers of many different crops around the world to making maximum yields and quality and solving difficult field problems with advanced innovative solutions. Hemp Plan offers the most advanced guidance to industrial hemp growers. The purpose of Hemp Plan is for you to realize the highest quality and yields with minimal THC for your crop's genetics by minimizing plant biotic and abiotic stresses. TPS Lab offers many services and options to the industrial hemp grower. Contact Joe at TPS Labs at 956-383-0739. That's 956-383-0739. That's TPS Lab. You're listening to the Texas Hemp Show, produced by your friends at the Texas Hemp Reporter. 60,000 copies published free every year. The Texas Hemp Reporter is mailed to over 2,000 licensed hemp producers in Oklahoma, New Mexico, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas. News, technology, trends, finance, culture, health, all things hemp in the Lone Star State. The Texas Hemp Reporter Magazine. Hey, this is Tommy Chong, and you're listening to the Texas Hemp Show. Now, back to the show with your host, Russell Dowden. Welcome back to the Texas Hemp Show. I'm Russell Dowden, publisher and editor for the Texas Hemp Reporter Magazine. You can find our publications all around Austin in uh, your CBD stores, your smoke shops. You can find them in your Planet Caves, your Oat Willies. They're in all HEBs and Whole Foods. I have to to note, though, that the Tommy Chong cover has been moving really well, and there's several HEBs that I've been to, guys, that the publications are empty there there's none of them in there so uh the tommy one has proved to move well the publication though um texas hemp reporter and uh, and then we've been doing the texas hemp show now since september this is podcast number 45 you uh, you can download any of the previous podcasts on spotify we're on itunes we're on google play we're on uh Stitcher, wherever you get your podcast, check out the Texas Hemp we're, Show. We're on iHeart now, right? I think we are. We got approved. I got the letter, uh, the email that we were now on iHeart Radio's app, but uh, I haven't gone to look yet to see if we're on there. So pretty much, you just keep looking. You can find the Texas Hemp Show pretty much anywhere. 
Um, I, I, I will say being on KLBJ is about the most fun <laughs> of, all, <laughs> of all the platforms, you know, from from the work that we've done in hemp with the Texas Hemp Industries Association from 2015 to see how far everything has come and, and to see more education going out to a broader audience. You see CBD shops everywhere. Yeah. I, I can't help but have a little bit of pride as I drive up and down I-35 from, from San Antonio to, to Dallas and see the amount of stores, the businesses that are being grown by this and you know, providing good education around insurance. You know, one of the questions I wanted to ask Greg when he was on was around transportation. Um, you know, my time around this, either through my own businesses or with yeah. different people, every situation that you can imagine from from products going down and plane crashes from the United States Postal Service and trying to get insurance on those products or facilities that burn down or product that was seized from law enforcement. Fortunately, all of those things were resolved um, and, and have set precedents in a lot of ways. Um, but getting good insurance, getting best practices in place, maintaining that transparency um, is, is where the industry needs to, to move towards to get on par with, with what we see with pharmaceutical supplements. Uh, You've been in this fight for a long time, Coleman. So uh, I, I know from, from the legislative side of things and, and – you know, it's becoming more part of the, our culture, uh, cannabis in general, as a global culture. But, you know, Jesse, it's, it's, we are in Texas. We're, we've got a magazine out now here in Central Texas about this. It's very, um, it's on the top of mind awareness. You've got these shops everywhere. You've got athletes that are uh, taking these products, retired athletes, professional retire, retired athletes that are getting into the space of green cannabis or CBD and health. And so here we are on the airwaves on, you know, one of the biggest talk stations in Central Texas, KLBJ, and we're talking about CBD and hemp here in Texas. The big thing that I've seen apparently changes people's minds is when grandma, <laughs> grandma has to start using cannabis and she's like, this is working wonders. I don't feel like I did when I was drinking <laughs> alcohol back in the day. I don't, I, don't, I don't have these fallouts from this. I feel wonderful. Like, Grandma, you can't be. Oh, no, it's great. You, you, we got to tell your legislators about this. They can't be banning this anymore. <laughs> Growing up in Sonora, Texas, a very small town, the, the point where I saw CBD products in the pharmacy in Sonora was the moment that I felt like we had won in a pretty big way. You know, Jesse earlier in one of the early segments was talking about some some new legislation that actually passed uh, just last night in the United States House of Representatives. Um, this is an amendment to, to the budget uh, that was sponsored by Representative Kurt Schrader and Morgan Griffith. Um, this would require um, and provide funding for the Centers for Food Safety and Applied Nutrition of the FDA to highlight the need for the agency to proceed with rulemaking on CBD by no later than 180 days. This has been a, a really big push from the industry for, for the last couple of years because the FDA has just kind of stalled. Um, they've, they've issued several warning labels to, to people making making medical claims related to products, um, and they've kind of shot some, some science, quote-unquote, across the bow. I think one of the studies out of Arkansas had mice eating one-third of their body weight in CBD, and they said, you know, this could cause liver issues. You know, it's, it's time that we genuinely <laughs> open up the, the research around this. I know that the DEA is making more funds available for cannabis research, and it's been kind of this regulatory chicken in the egg. The FDA says, well, it's illegal. We can't study these things. And the DEA says, well, we have no research from, from the FDA to, to be able to, to deschedule these things. So, It's circular uh, logic. It's just horrible circular logic in the end. Well, we did get the expansion of research in this last uh, session. Uh, that was part of the medical expansion. Institutional review boards. That's right. Part of our medical expansion. Yeah. And, and next section or next session, if we can get Rick Perry to, to come and endorse cannabis like he did psilocybin and MDMA for for PTSD from veterans, maybe we'll get some some big push. <laughs> I, I was really shocked to see that, but. You know, with the focus on health. Um, and well, Dan Patrick keeps spawn stalling things at that level as things move through the house, and, and then not all of them get to to his desk. And then if they do, they've they've got to pass, um, you know, his office. So we'll we'll see uh, we'll see how um, elections um, play out in twenty twenty two. Yeah, you know, keep it keep an eye for HR eight forty one. This this sponsored by the same representative Schrader and Griffith. 
um, please share that with with your congressman, with with our federal senators, uh, John Cornyn and, and Ted Cruz. Um, Texas is, is one of the largest states in the country. It's got one of the largest Republican congressional delegations. There's still a lot of education that, that needs to happen there, but we've mentioned it on the show all the time. Texas is literally surrounded um, with Mexico that now has recreational marijuana, New Mexico, Arkansas, Louisiana, Oklahoma that has probably one of the most liberal cannabis um, policies in the country. There's a lot of revenue um, that the state is losing out on. And, and coming off of COVID and a lot of the budgetary shortfalls yeah. of the state, the time is now. Um, whether you're pushing this from, from the economic opportunity, which is absolutely there and been proven in all of the states that have, have passed marijuana laws, or from the, from the medical side, there are so many anecdotal stories of, of people finding benefit from this and still to this date, not one, one overdose, which is not something that we can say for the opioid crisis that is still a, a very looming issue, um, both in Texas and around the country. Well, CBD products are very popular. I mean, it's, it's, uh, my, you know, I take a CBD. I mean, it, it, it helps you sleep better. There's just so many positives for, for this. And, you know, I hope that, I hope that the, the listeners, uh, educate themselves a, a little more about this because this is stuff that this is becoming a uh, I, we're so grateful for klbj for taking on the, a, a show like this um not uh we approached some other stations and and uh and klbj was certainly one of them but um uh, very uh, you know glad for the opportunity to, to speak to to the listeners this way and, and get this topic out there yeah i i would love to see some some more advertisers in this space you know one of the companies that i've worked with here in austin for many years uh people's pharmacy was really one of Mm-hmm. Then the first, you know, pharmacies here in the Austin area that, that put those products on the shelf. Excellent source of, of um, nutritional direction there at those stores. Definitely be looking at where you're purchasing your products. Make sure that you're getting a consult from someone who shares those products with people with different issues and, and make sure you're getting something that's that's really effective for you. Well, you know, we're going to be... Continuing this conversation for the rest of the month, we'll be on here another 11 weeks at least, I know, on KLBJ here in the mornings. And it's podcast 45 as we wrap this week's program up. Next week on the show, I have scheduled uh, Cheech Marine on August 4th, but I haven't confirmed that with his um, agent yet. So we just need to get that confirmed. August 11th show, Andrew Bish of Bish Enterprises. uh, uh, a big wig in agriculture up there in the Kansas area. And uh, so uh, then Jack Fecal will be on on the 18th and then Cosmic Cowboy Extraction. So uh, tune in uh, next week. It's the Texas Hemp Show. Thanks for listening. Bad, bad.